everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. So in today's video, I'm showing you guys this autumn leaves encapsulated design set. I'm so looking forward to getting into all the autumn designs and I had so much fun doing this one. I'm going to be working on my Glamour Liz practice hand. So I have already applied my tips and clear base. So we're jumping straight in with the design. And first up, I'm going to be using the gorgeous Emerald City from CJP absolutely love this green so i'm starting up on the pointer finger and i'm placing that emerald city right down at the cuticle area tapping it up into place and then pulling it down towards the free edge did touch my sidewall ever so slightly there so don't do that but i'm just cleaning it up with my brush and I'm just fading this down. I don't want to take it all the way down to the free edge because it's not really needed because I'm going to be coming in with some glitter there anyway. But I'm just making sure that it blends out nicely and there's not a huge ridge. And then I'm just going to come in with another small bead just to build up the coverage of the colour. This is a really shimmery, rich colour um, and it's quite pigmented and I work quite wet with these if I know I'm going to be encapsulating them. So I just come in with that another bead of colour to build it up slightly. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the little finger as well because in this design these nails are not exactly the same but they're very similar. So I'm pretty much applying that exact same way as before. I always, like I said, just come in with that second bead to build up the coverage. And then next up, I'm going to be coming in with this gorgeous glitter. This is called Valencia Hollow, I believe. I will double check and leave it in the description box below. But it's from Trilogy and it's a beautiful glitter, especially for autumn. So I've picked that up with a small wet bead of my CJP Crystal Glass, placed it down at the free edge and I'm just feathering it back slightly to fade over that green. This glitter went so well against the green acrylic. So I'm just working with small wet beads of acrylic and keeping my brush nice and wet with Monomar so I'm able to pat and move that acrylic around without it all sticking in my brush. I'm trying to keep my side walls nice and neat so that I don't lose too much of my shape. And then I'm going to be using these gorgeous autumn leaves. You can't really see it here, but they color shift from green to copper. And I absolutely love them. These are from the Glitter Nail Angel, which has sadly closed down. So they're not available. Um, so I can't leave a link to them in the description box below. But you can pick these up at most glitter and nail art suppliers. And I've simply popped down a little wash of clear acrylic. And then I'm just popping those leaves on top of that. Just so that they'll hold in place until I encapsulate. And on this nail, I just wanted the leaves to go over that gold glitter and fade onto the green ever so slightly. I haven't popped too many on, but... I thought it looked quite pretty. And then on to the, oh no, sorry. And then what I'm doing is I've got a green chrome powder and I've just picked this up just using my wet acrylic brush. So I've not added any acrylic. I'm just using my brush that's wet with monomer. I've dipped into that green chrome and just picked up at such a tiny amount. And I'm just sort of diffusing that through the flowers just because I thought it would give off a really pretty effect over that gold glitter. So then on to the little finger, I'm pretty much doing exactly the same with the gold glitter. So I've just popped that down at the free edge and then I'm just blending it back. And on this nail, rather than putting the leaves all over the gold, I'm just going to sort of put them where that fade is. But first up, I just wanted to apply a little bit of that green chrome. I just loved the effect that it gave off. I wasn't too sure when I was going to use it at first, but it worked really well. So I'm just putting that across that sort of swoosh where the fade is. And then I'm popping on my clear acrylic to stick those little leaves on. I think I just stuck three or four leaves just across that fade. I wanted this now for you to be able to see that gold glitter a little bit more.
And then we're going to move on to the middle finger. And to start off with on the middle finger, I'm going to be using CJP's Fantasy. This is one of my favorite core powders from them. It's so highly pigmented, so it covers absolutely any imperfections you might have on that nail bed. And it's perfect for creating extended nail beds as well. But for this particular design, what I'm doing is I'm popping it down at that cuticle area and just fading it down towards the free edge. I'm not taking it all the way down to the free edge because because I want there to be a slightly transparent tip. So I'm just making sure to get a nice neat cuticle area. And then again, like with the green, just fading it out slightly. And then I'm going to come in with another bead just because I'd worked quite thin with that one. So it hadn't applied, the colour hadn't applied very evenly. So I'm just going to pop another bead on just to build up that colour. And again, same as before, just fading it down the nail. And then whilst that acrylic is still wet, I'm going to tap on my autumn leaves. And I'm focusing most of these on the centre of the nail in that pinky nude acrylic. But I am going to fade them up into the clear tip slightly. But I wanted the tips of this nail and the ring finger um, to be clear. And if I feel as though those leaves aren't going to stick, I do just come in with a small wet bead of clear acrylic just so I can press them down into that acrylic and they'll hold in place ready to be encapsulated. Otherwise, you can find when it does come to encapsulating, you might move them around. So it is just better if they've got something to set into. And then we're going to move on to the ring finger. So the ring finger was my absolute favourite in this set, to be honest. So I'm starting off again with fantasy at the cuticle area, but this time I'm not taking it as far down. I'm just simply covering that natural nail bed area and where the tip meets that natural nail bed area, just for a bit of coverage so it looks a little neater. So again, just building up that colour, keeping it nice and thin because I'm going to be putting those leaves on top of this. And I wanted to layer the leaves up a little bit so I made sure to keep my fantasy as thin as possible so we didn't end up with a too bulky nail and then I'm going to come in and apply the leaves so on this particular nail I wanted the leaves to look a little bit like a pile of leaves so I pop the I pop them down but then I start adding my clear acrylic so I can layer them up a little bit just so some overlapping and some on top of others and then as we get down towards the clear part of the nail I just fade them out slightly but I'm layering them up where the apex area is so that we can encapsulate them and we're the nails a little bit thicker there anyway if that makes sense like we're building it up a little bit thicker there so it doesn't matter if the products we apply are a little bit thicker I hope that makes sense. You don't want to basically add too much bulk at your free edge because that's where you want the thinnest part of the nail to be. So as you can see here, I'm layering them up and I'm using my clear acrylic to hold them in place. And then, like I said, I'm going to fade that out towards the free edge. I'm just making sure they are placed all nice and neatly, not too close to the side walls because, again, that's an area where we don't want too much bulk. And then as we come down towards that clear tip, I'm just going to add one or two because I wanted this nail to be mainly clear, but I am going to be doing a matte effect over the top of it. So I was really pleased with this nail. It was my favourite one of the set, like I said, so I hope you guys like it as much as I did. Or if it wasn't your favourite nail, or which one did you like the most? And then this is what the nails looked like so far once all of that design work was done. I didn't leave any of the encapsulation or filing in this particular video. So I then went off camera, encapsulated in my CJP crystal glass, file bath shaped all of that jazz, cleaned away all of the dust. And we're now ready to come in and do the absolute best bit, which is top coating. So I'm going to be using my CJP tack free top gloss for the shiny nails. And then for the matte nail, I'm going to be using my Femme Fatale Satin Sheets Matte Top Coat. So I'm just going to come in and apply a nice even layer of top coat to all of the nails, wriggling it up towards that cuticle area, making sure not to get none on what would be the skin or the cuticle. And I don't want it to pull at my sidewalls as well. So I thin it out a little bit as we're coming down the nails. 
And then on the on this nail, so the clear tip nails, I do top coat underneath as well. So you will see that I come underneath and just top coat underneath slightly. So when I was cleaning these nails up, I made sure to really scrub underneath as well and remove any of that dust. I did have a little piece of fluff stuck in my top coat here. So that's why you see me go over it a few times. So then I'm going to finish up the little finger with this top coat and then I will switch to the matte top coat. So I'll just let you guys continue watching this bit. Now on to the matte nail, I'm coming in with that matte top coat. So it does appear shiny to begin with and I do exactly the same as before. I do still top coat underneath as well. Now it looks really, really pretty glossy. Don't get me wrong, but I absolutely loved the effect matte. So once I had finished top coating all of these nails, I popped them in to cure for 60 seconds. And then I remembered that I was supposed to be adding these little roses to this nail. I completely forgot my plan. Now, usually if I'm adding any crystals or embellishments, I add them on before top coating because you will find that the glue just doesn't dry as quickly over top coat. So they slide around a little bit whilst we're waiting for that glue to dry. So definitely apply them before top coating. If you do find you've top coated and then decide you want to add crystals, I would just recommend buffing over that top coat and then gluing them down and top coating around them. But because I was working on my practice hand, I just come in and glued them on anyway. But then guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope you all enjoyed watching and loved the set as much as I did. If you did, then please give the video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love it if you did. Take care, lots of love, and I shall see you all again soon in the next video. Bye-bye.